in my fidget spinner magic video, I got a comment that said, this is so creative, I wish you would make a video on how you actually create tricks. That would be amazing. Anyways, thank you for the vid. Bye, smiley face. And that got 351 likes. So if this video doesn't get 351 views, gonna be very annoyed. I just want to preface this by saying I don't consider myself a particularly creative magician. I look at a lot of other magicians and I think, why are you so creative? And why am I not? However, I have created some magic, I've created some routines, I'm gonna share my approach to that for you guys so that you can know how I do this and that will be great. Good. Let's do it. Got my cup of tea because we're talking about creativity. So I've made a few notes and we're going to start off by talking about my general approach to creativity and then we're going to go through a couple of videos as examples and talk about specifically what I did to create the magic that I did. Firstly, if I just wanted to sit down and come up with a magic trick, I would really struggle to do that. I personally find that for me, I need some kind of limitation or some kind of starting point to get started. What I mean by that is that sitting down and just going, I'm going to create magic means that you've got too many options to the point where it sort of stops you being able to think about anything. But if you sit down and you go, I'm gonna create a magic trick involving a mug, then you're way more limited and you've only got a few options. You've got to think, well, what can I do with that mug? Could I make something appear in the mug, like tea appear in the mug? Could I change the drink to one drink to another? Could I do something with the design of the mug? Could I make it disappear? So you can see it's already a lot easier for your brain to start thinking of different ideas you can do with an object. So for me, I always find I work way better when I have some kind of limitation or some kind of starting point to create. Another thing that I find that works really well for me, and I would go as far as saying that this is really bad advice, so don't do this because I don't think it's a good idea, but for me, I work best when I'm under pressure. I always find, when I was going through these lists of ideas, I was like, yep, I did that video the day before, yep, I worked on that trick the day before, yep, I worked on that trick the day before filming. So many times I've been creating the magic just before I've actually been filming the magic and I think that's a bad idea. I think it's a bad idea because it means that you're never gonna get things as polished as you could with lots and lots of practice. But for me, for some reason, I find that my brain just works better when I've got a very, very tight deadline to achieving something. Alrighty, so let's dive into some specific videos that I did some creaty create magic magic for. First of all, we should talk about the fidget spinner magic video. This is one of those things where it was fairly easy-ish for me to be creative because I've given an object and that's my starting point, that's my limitation so I can think what could be done with this fidget spinner. The first magic trick I came across with a fidget spinner was done by a really, really annoyingly talented magician called Vincent Kuo? 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 Sorry if I butcher your name there. I saw a Facebook video of him making a fidget spinner levitate and I just thought that is insanely good. So when I decided I wanted to do magic with a fidget spinner, I sort of dabbled in doing a levitation but then decided against it. I didn't really want to copy what he'd already done. I didn't think I was going to do as good a job as him. So I decided just to go in a totally different direction. So step one for creating fidget spinner magic for me was to buy loads of fidget spinners. I don't want to think about how much money I spent on fidget spinners, but it was too much. Too much. So once I got a load of fidget spinners, I just sat at home in front of a mirror on the floor and just messed around with them for ages. So the first thing I needed to do was think of all the tricks that I could potentially do with a fidget spinner. At this point, I'm just brainstorming different ideas. I'm not really concerned about whether or not they'd be possible at all, because everything I'm going to try and do is impossible. So you don't really think necessarily about how you're going to achieve the thing, you just think about what thing would be cool to achieve. But then at the same time, I'm also just messing around with them going, oh, this is a cool little thing, could I use that for a magic trick? And then you're sort of working from both directions at the same time, which is a little bit weird. So I basically spent a, a solid day of just really intense practice working on fidget spinner magic, and I came up with loads of little different tricks with the fidget spinners, without them really being in much of an order. And then once I had all these little tricks, it was a case of putting them in an order that made them flow together in a nice routine and getting rid of the tricks that didn't really fit that routine. Whenever I'm doing magic with an object, I tend to buy lots of different versions of the same object because I find that they're all a little bit different. So for example, if I just bought the normal fidget spinners, I wouldn't have come up with the routine I came up with because I found that the LED fidget spinners, I could pop out the LEDs. And I didn't realize that until I was messing around and accidentally popped one out. Because I could pop out the LEDs, that created a whole different direction for the routine and then I was making them vanish and reappear in the fidget spinner. Obviously I can't talk too much about how I create the actual magic itself but basically I draw upon my knowledge as a magician and try and take methods and techniques from other tricks and apply them to different tricks or just come up with different stuff. And if you learn enough about magic, you will come up with things that you could do because you know how magic works. I really don't know how to explain it other than that. It's just learning magic 
the more magic you know, the more magic you can create because the more tools you have in your brain that you can use. The next video I want to talk about is the unbelievable misdirection video I did with Tom Scott. So me and Tom decided we were going to collab together and I wanted to do something that he would find somewhat interesting because his whole channel is about explaining really interesting things and I thought what's an interesting element of magic that I can kind of use as a theme. So I decided it would be cool to do something along the lines of misdirection. So in magic there's lots of different tricks that lots of magicians have done lots of times in lots of different ways and two of those tricks are card to box and card to pocket. This is pretty self-explanatory. In card to box you make a card vanish and appear under or inside the box. In card to pocket you make a card vanish and appear in your pocket. I thought those tricks were really nice and they had a cool misdirection theme inherently built into them so I thought uh, it would be good to do those. So the day before filming, yeah I know I should have planned ahead. So the day before I was actually scheduled to film, me and my friend Ollie who is a fantastically skilled card magician, we, uh, we were kind of living together at the time and we went into this room called the meeting room. Basically, in the flat I used to live in, there was this big empty room with some tables and chairs that anyone in the flat could just use. So it was a really good space to just kind of work on ideas. And we just went in that room and we just decided to work on card magic that was related to card to box or card to pocket. The interesting thing about this approach that we had is that we weren't so much collaborating together on the routine. We were more working on our own separate routines. Like we literally had a timer going where we would spend half an hour or 15 minutes or whatever it was working on a routine then we would do a little show and tell to each other and that would basically help us come up with really cool ideas but it was just a really good environment to work in and I remember thinking I was so in the zone on that day I just felt like creativity was going really well and uh, it's just a really good work environment so cheers Ollie for being in being you know good to work with so then as I say I just worked on that routine I came up with a couple of different directions so I ended up combining the card to box routine with the card to pocket routine with another routine and just sort of creating my own different ideas and just mixing loads of things together which created a really chaotic card trick but it worked really well because the whole theme of it was misdirection and it just tied in really nicely as a little side note some people will break down that video every single frame every single step and try and figure out how the trick is done and then they'll be triumphant in the comments to go aha I got you I just would like to point out that I don't get any pleasure in trying to trick people. To me, I'm just trying to entertain people. So if people pick apart my videos, I really don't mind, although I'd really prefer people don't write it in the comments because that spoils it for people that don't want to know and it kind of kills the magic. But people that think, haha, I got you, I'm, I don't think in that way. And it just, there's a really weird sort of challenge dynamic I find is often happening when you do magic on YouTube. But anyway, a little bit of a tangent there. As I mentioned earlier on, having a starting point is really, really good for my creativity. And in the case of the sugar trick, I actually took a magician's existing trick and used that as the starting point and then built a whole routine around that. So the magician is called Alex Pandria and he has this really cool trick with sugar packets where you make them change places. And I went out to film that in the street with Tomek and uh, I just wasn't feeling it. it. Nothing to do with his trick. I just was not in the mood. I just wasn't on top form. So we went and took a break. I went and sat in a cafe. And then when I sat down with the sugar packets, my brain started going all over the place. And I was thinking of different things you could do that were similar, but different from his original trick. I saw this card trick that I'd seen performed by this amazing magician. He's unfortunately passed away now. But this amazing magician called Tommy Wonder, where he changed loads of cards into one playing card. And I thought it'd be really cool if I took that sort of that pacing and that style and I applied it to the sugar trick and took a load of sugar packets and changed them into different colored sugar packets. So then I just, once again, went home, sat on my bed for like a day or two with loads of sugar packets and just brainstormed nonstop. And that, just really fun. For me, that is like fun. Just sitting on my bed, messing around with magic. I'm a happy guy. And then once I had the idea and the routine, I try and think about how that can relate to people in some way. Like, why would you change sugar packets into other sugar packets? So I came up with the idea, which is sort of based on a kind of truth at a university where my housemates would steal condiments from like a uh, pub. So we get like little sachets of ketchup, etc. I thought I could take that and apply it to the sugar trick and then change the story a little bit to give it a little bit more meaning or at least a little bit more relevance to people that were watching. Another thing though about the presentations of magic, I never force, I always try my best, this is such a huge thing for me, I never want to force adding a story to a magic trick or or creating some kind of really interesting presentation if it doesn't feel like it fits. For me, I would always rather just do a really strong magic trick that didn't really have much context than try and force context upon a trick that it really didn't fit. I see a lot of magicians, when they try and create magic with a really interesting presentation, it can fall a bit flat because the presentation is really forced. But for me, in this case, the presentation did help and give context to the effect without really stepping on it too much. All right, what else we got? Oh yeah, the other thing with that routine is that I really wanted to make sure that the ending was some kind of plot twist just to get a really good level of impact. So I came up with the idea of changing all the sugar packets back when I pour them out the cup which um, was something that I really wanted to do and had no idea how I was going to do it for a very long time. I tried loads of different ways. 
and I just had no idea what I was doing until I finally settled on something that really worked. The last trick I want to talk about is one of my favourite videos I've ever made that no one really watched in the scheme of things. I think it's because the title wasn't that interesting. Welcome to a world where we need to be all clickbaity. Uh, the title was Seaman's Psychic Serial Powers. I like the title. I was invited to be on this YouTube show called Serial Time and they wanted me to do some magic and I wanted to film something with them for my channel and it only made sense to do some kind of trick involving cereal. So that was my starting point, that was my limitation, my parameters. So what I did was I went into the cereal aisle of a supermarket, sat down and just stared at boxes of cereal. And I was just going through my head of everything that I could do with cereal and so many bad ideas I came up with and a few good ideas. And then I settled on the idea of changing the packaging in some way, making it change from one box to another, uh, which I really love. I love anything where you change the ink on a packet. I just think it's a really cool, weird thing to do. This, unlike most of the other examples I've talked about today, was not something that I came up with in one day. This took a, a lot of time to refine and make it work. But speaking true to my whole last minute tendencies, it was only the day before when I really got it nailed before filming. And even when I was going into film, I was like, I need some kind of plan B because I don't know if I'm going to pull this off. There's something actually really satisfying about having an idea, having a way of... Thank you. There's something really satisfying about having an idea, having a way of achieving it, but not knowing if it's possible and then just pushing through and then it actually works. Like that trick paying off to me was such a satisfying point in my magical life because I just was really, yeah, I was really happy it worked. If you watch the video, it kind of looks like the trick is going wrong. And I love tricks where it goes wrong because for the most part, people don't really believe that the trick's really gone wrong. So I really committed to the acting. And I, I think there's a moment, I think it's Jimmy when he's watching where he goes from being like, ah, he's pretending to, oh, he's actually messed up. And I love that kind of theater within magic when magic goes wrong. Oh yeah, and the actual way that I came up with how to do that trick was I actually took a card trick where you change one card into another and applied that to the cereal box. So it, it's like a totally different trick that you're getting the method from. So a lot of the time you can take other magicians work and see how you can take those techniques and use them in different ways. Really it's about building up as much knowledge in magic as possible and then using that knowledge to create stuff in different and interesting ways. This video's gone on for way too long. Uh, if you've stayed till this point, thank you very much. Subscribe if you're new and uh, thank you.